In this video, I'm going to show you how to use German short rows to turn the heel on toe-up socks. So this is an example of German short rows that I've used in my latest uh, sock pattern. So at the time of filming this, this pattern doesn't have a name yet and it's not been released yet, but I'll pop the details below this video uh, when this pattern is released. So these socks are knitted from the toe-up. They have gusset increases along here. And then for the heel turn, I did German short rows. In the past, I've always done wrap and turn short rows for the heel turn on this type of toe-up socks. Uh, but when I was knitting uh, these, I wanted to see if, I, if it would look better with a German short row. Um, German short rows are my preferred short rows for other types of short rows, but I'd always stuck to wrap and turn short rows for a heel turn. So I decided to give German short rows a go for these, and I really like it. Um, I'll show you here where you can see the heel a bit better. They give a really nice um, heel turn. You don't get any gaps where you pick up the wraps, which can happen quite easily. And I think German short rows are actually easier to learn than um, wrap and turn short rows. So let me show you how to do this. So the socks are worked from the toe up. And then when you get to a certain distance before this foot is the full uh, length that you want it to be, you increase for the gusset. So you're increasing for the gusset on the bottom needle, so the needle for the bottom of the foot. So you work the pattern on the top of the foot, like a lace pattern in this case, and then on the needle for the bottom on the foot of the foot, you increase for the gusset. So this is a little sample I've knitted up. Um, I haven't done the toe, I just cast on, joined in the round, and knitted a few rounds in rib, and then a few rounds in stocking stitch. I am doing magic loop, but you can do this on double pointed needles. You just need to divide the stitches from the top of the foot onto one or two needles, and the same with the bottom of the foot, depending on whether you like to have your stitches on three double pointed needles or four double pointed needles. So if you use three, I normally put the stitches for the top of the foot onto one double pointed needle, and then I divide the stitches for the bottom of the foot onto two double pointed needles. And if I use four double pointed needles, I just put half the stitches for the top on two needles and the same for the bottom. And then use another needle to nip with, of course. Okay, so I have uh, knitted a few rounds. Then I've actually done a few gusset increases along here. Uh, I think I've increased six stitches on each side. Now, when I finished um, a round, I finished here, so this is the stitches for the bottom of the foot. I finished the needle with the stitches for the bottom of the foot. And then instead of rearranging my needles and continuing to work in the round, I leave those stitches on the needle tip and I turn. So I'm ready to, ready to work a wrong side row. So you want to be ready to work a wrong side row on the stitches that you are using for the bottom of the foot. So where you've done your gusset increases. And then I'm going to purl the first one and I'm going to purl till I get to the last seven stitches. I'm purling Norwegian style. It doesn't matter how you purl. English style, continental style, Norwegian style, any other type of purling. Just purl till you have seven stitches left. And if I'm going too fast, um, just stop, uh, just pause and catch up. Okay, let me count two, four, six, seven, two, four, six, seven. Yeah, so I got seven stitches left. So if you have a pattern that's written for wrap and turn, you would knit till you had eight stitches left. So when you're knitting, um, when you're substituting German short rows for wrap and turn short rows, you have to knit or purl that stitch that you would be wrapping. So if I was doing wrap and turn short rows, I would knit one stitch less, then I'd wrap and wrap that next stitch. But for German short rows, you purl or knit that stitch and then turn. So I have seven stitches left and all I'm going to do is turn. 
I do have another video on German short rows, which I will try and remember to link below. And now I'm going to slip the first stitch pearlwise with the yarn in front. So I'll do it English style first. So you hold the yarn in your right hand. Keep the yarn in front. I'll do it continental style in a minute. So yarn in front. I put my needle in pearlwise to that next stitch. I'm on a nip row, but my needle goes in pearlwise. And then normally you would take the yarn between the needles to the back ready to knit. But in this uh, for this occasion, you're going to take the working yarn over the top of the needle and pull it down at the back. You can take your working yarn over the needle to the back, pull it really hard, so really yank on it. And then you can see that you're actually pulling up the stitch from the row below. Hang on. I'm about to drop a stitch off my left needle then. I don't want that. So I pulled the stitch up from the row below and I pulled it up and over my right hand needle. So instead of one loop there, it looks like I have two. It's still just one stitch, but it's just pulled up the two loops from the stitch below. So let me go back and show you how to do that continental style. So continental style, go under the working yarn. I put my finger on this so the loop doesn't slide off into the stitch pearl wise so that puts the yarn at the front of the needle. Take the yarn, take the stitch off the left hand needle and then because the yarn is already over this right hand needle, I just pull really tight. And then you have to keep hold on it. So whether you do continental style or English style, once you pull the yarn over the right hand needle and pull it tight, don't let it slide back again. So don't relax it and let it slide back again. That's very easy to do if you knit English style because you tend to relax the yarn a bit as you throw to knit the next stitch. So just try and keep it pulled fairly tight. So you can see I got this funny double stitch there. And then I'm going to knit till seven stitches left on this side. Okay, so I think that's it. Two, four, six, seven. So I have seven stitches left. Just turn. Don't need to do anything. Just turn. And then even though I'm on a pearl row, I'm going to do it exactly the same way as I did on the previous row. So I'll do English style first. So take the yarn to the front, slip the stitch pearl wise with the yarn at the front, and then take the yarn over the right hand needle and pull it really tight. And if you pull with the yarn at the front, then you take the yarn between the needles to the front so you're ready to pull. Okay, so you slip the stitch pearl wise with the yarn at the front and you pull the yarn up and over the right hand needle, pull it really tight. So you're pulling up the stitch from the row below over that needle. And then if you pull with the yarn at the front, you take the yarn between the needles to the front so you're ready to pull. And I'm going to go back and do that continental style. So continental style, you can take the yarn to the front if you want to and then slip it. I tend to hold the yarn at the back and then just take my right hand needle under that working yarn, put my finger on it so it doesn't slide off. Then I go into the stitch pearl wise and take it off so you can see the yarn comes over here and then I pull it really tight. And then if you pull with the yarn at the front, then you take the yarn to the front. If you pull with the yarn at the back, the reach and pull like I do, then I just take the work needle behind the working yarn and I pull. So I pull whichever way you normally do. So you'll see you've got two, four, six, seven stitches here. Then you've got that funny double stitch and then I've pulled one stitch. So now you're going to pull till you get to the double stitch on the other side. Okay, so the next stitch is the double stitch, which looks a bit funny. It looks like I've done something wrong. So I have the uh, six, seven stitches here that I left on row one, and then I got that weird double stitch. So turn, 
slip the first stitch purlwise with the yarn in front pull the yarn up and over the right hand needle and pull it really tight and then you're going to knit till you get to the double stitch That's the double stitch on this side. So I'm going to turn. And then I'm going to slip the first stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. So depending on how you purl or how you hold the yarn, as long as the yarn's in front, slip the stitch purlwise, take the yarn oops, over the right hand needle, pull it really tight. And then I'm going to purl till I get to the double stitch. So each time you are purling or knitting one stitch less than you did on the previous row. In the pattern it will tell you how many stitches to knit and purl for the first couple of rows. So for example you may say knit 25 which means that on the next row you'd purl 24 and then on the next row you'd knit 23 and then you purl 22 and so on. So each time you do a row you work one stitch less than you did on the previous row. So if you're worried about not being able to see your double stitches, you can just count. But make sure that the next stitch that you get to is your double stitch. So I have two double stitches there, so I'm going to turn. And then I'll do it English style this time. So yarn in front, slip the stitch purlwise, and then pull the yarn over the needle, right hand needle to the back, pull it really tight. Um, and then, so you... Slip the stitch purlwise with the yarn in front, take the yarn over the right hand needle, pull it really tight, and then you put your yarn wherever it needs to be, depending on whether you're knitting or purling. So I'm going to knit till I get to the double stitch on this side. So I got one more to knit so i've got two double stitches on this side i'm going to turn then i'm going to slip the stitch purlwise with the yarn in front pull it really tight and then i'm going to purl till i get to the double stitch Okay, and then I'm going to, I've got three double stitches here, and I've got one, two, three double stitches there. So I'm going to do two more, and then I'm going to show you the next section. So slip the stitch purlwise with the yarn in front, pull the yarn up and over the right hand needle, and pull it really tight. And then knit till you get to the um, double stitch. Okay, so I've got three stitches there. Now, this is the last one I'm going to do. So I'm going to, um, you're going to work back and forth, however many patterns the pattern says, and then I'll show you how to do the last two rows. So you start with a purl row, and because we've turned, I have to start with a slip stitch. So I slip stitch, purl wise with the yarn in front, pull it up and over, Yarn over the right hand needle, pull it really tight so I pull up that stitch from the row below to give me that weird looking double stitch. Then I'm going to purl till I get to um, the first double stitch. So these are the last two rows, um, which are also the first two rows of the actual heel flap. Make sure you go right up to the double stitch. So I got one more stitch there before the double stitch. So here I got one two, three, four double stitches. And normally you'd probably have something like seven or eight. I'm going to purl the first double stitch. So it doesn't matter how you purl, but you just go into the needle, go into that double stitch, and you're just purling it as a single stitch. So I purl one double stitch, and I go into the next double stitch, and I purl it as a single stitch. And then I'll do the same thing with the next one. So I'm purling the th first three double stitches and then I have one double stitch left 
So just purl how many the pattern says, but you will have one double stitch left. I think the pattern for these, you might be purling something like seven. And then when you have one double stitch left, I'm going to pull that double stitch together with the first stitch of these seven I have sitting on the outside here. So I'm going to go in and purl that double stitch and the next stitch together. So it will almost be like doing purl three together, which is quite difficult to do Norwegian purl. There we go. So now I have six stitches on the side here and I'm going to turn. And this time I don't have to... Um, slip and wrap like we just did for the double for the for the short rows this time because i'm on a knit row i'm going to just slip that stitch knitwise with the yarn at the back so because i'm a knit row the yarn's at the back and i'm going to put my needle in as if i'm going to knit and just slip that stitch and then knit till you get to the first double stitch so these are the stitches that we just worked here and it just kind of turns your knitting from going that way to going that way So that's my first of the four double stitches. So I go in and knit that stitch as a single stitch. Looks like a weird double stitch, but I just go in and knit it as a single stitch. Two, three. So I knitted the first three of those four double stitches as, a sing as three single stitches. And then I got that next double stitch. So that's the last double stitch. And then I have the um, next normal stitch. So the, la the first one of the seven I had left on the first time I turned. So I'm going to knit the double stitch and the next stitch together. So it's like knitting three together. Then I have six stitches remaining here. Then I turn. Now I'm going to slip purlwise with the yarn in front. But I don't have to wrap it this time. So let me do it English style first, actually. But this time I'm just going to do a normal slip purlwise with yarn in front. So yarns at the front. I go into the stitch purlwise and I take it off. And then I go in and start purling. So if you do it continental style. I hold the yarn at the back. Then I go under the working yarn. Hold my finger on it into the stitch and take it off. And then depending on whether you pull with the yarn at the front or the yarn at the back, I pull with the yarn at the back. So I take the yarn between the needles to the back and pull. But you just want to do a normal slip with yarn in front and then pull till you get to um, one stitch before those six stitches that we haven't worked yet. Um, which is, so you slip one, then you pull two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you purl 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So that was the stitch I turned last time. You can see I've got this big gap here. So these stitches here is what's pulling this hair up into the heel flap. So I'm going to pull those two stitches together. And now I have five stitches left there and I'm going to turn. And then I'm going to slip this one knitwise with the yarn at the back. And then I'm going to knit, I think I said 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then I'm going to do... I tend to do SSK or knit two together through the back loop. On this pattern, I actually did knit two together through the back loop. In the past, I've always done SSK, but I'm experimenting to see if knit two together through the back loop will look better. So I'm knitting two together through the back loop. Then I'm going to turn. So from now on, every row um, is the same. So every right side row this is the same. Every wrong side row is the same. So every right side row, I slip. With the yarn at the back, slip knit twice with the yarn at the back, then I knit 16, knit two together through the back loop or SSK, whatever the pattern says, then I turn, slip on purl wise with the yarn at the front, purl 16, purl two together. So each time I'm purling two together or knitting two together, I'm taking in one stitch from the outside here. 
So each time I turn, I have one less stitch here and one less stitch here. And after every right side row, I should have the same stitches here as I do here. So I got two, four, five there, and I got five here. And I keep going back and forth like that till I have no stitches left here and no stitches left here. And then I finish with the knit row. And then I can go back to working in the round and starting on the leg. So I hope that was helpful. So if you're used to doing wrap and turn short rows for toe up socks with a gusset, like my creme caramel pattern, for example, uh, then you can try German short rows instead if you want to. And I will link my regular German short row tutorial below as well. If you have any questions, just ask below this video. And I will also link the pattern to this uh, sock pattern as well. Thank you for watching.